Welcome back to Collecting Cars. Now there were lots of very cool cars of the 70s, cars that sort of defined the era, that were almost caricatures of themselves, but there weren't many as cool as a Citroen SM. But Reynolds, Mr. 70s, drove some very cool cars in that area. Think about the Pontiac Firebird, the Trans Am. And then of course, in the longest yard, he drives this, his wife's Citroen SM. But of course, in that car chase, what the cops behind him don't realise is that this has got a very cool trick up its sleeve. Let's go and find a place to park up and we'll take a closer look. Woo -hoo -hoo. Citroen intended the SM to be a sportier, faster DS. They took the already successful hydropneumatic suspension system and the disc brakes, but what they lacked was a sporty enough, fast enough engine to compete with the likes of Jaguar and Jensen. So, what to do? The rather bemusing solution came in thanks from the Michelin appointed managing director's strategy that he led in January 1968 to purchase Maserati and in doing so gave Citroen and the SM the powertrain that they needed. Genius. Well, not quite. In typical Citroen fashion, it snowballed. Citroen was stretching itself elsewhere at the same time, and like the DS before it, the SM became an over-engineered car ahead of its time. In 1973, the effects of the world economic crisis were beginning to affect all large car purchases, and sales dropped to a total of 2019. Peugeot then wrestled control of Citroen from its longtime partner Michelin in a government-brokered deal, and production fell off a cliff to a mere 294. And over a five-year lifespan from 1970, only 12,920 of the Robert Apron-designed SM coupes were ever built. I absolutely love how this thing looks. Down that side profile there, it's like something out of the Jetsons. And the front, I mean, it's just so cool. The bonnet is actually enormous. It's got this really low slung, protruding nose, very sort of low profile. The nose to me sort of reminds me of a Jensen Interceptor, but it has its own unique features. We've got these very distinctive headlights and then something you almost never see, which is a sort of galleried number plate behind this glass. It looks fantastic because it doesn't interrupt the design, the rest of this front bumper, it actually keeps it very clean. And then we've got all this lovely chrome which sweeps around the front, so then we've got these reflectors which are just nicely hidden into the front bumper there. As we move around the side of the car, you'll notice that the passenger side, this car's a left-hand drive, doesn't have a wing mirror sort of interrupting the lines of the car. It's absolutely gorgeous got some very interesting angles, some of which are beautiful and some of them you could sort of feel are quite ugly duckling, but it all comes together very nicely and there's some really cool features to have a look at. We've got these vents here on the bonnet and then we've got the Citroen emblems there just sort of mounted on top, that looks very cool. And then we've got these lovely little bumps over where the windscreen wipers are mounted just underneath. Currently, the car is in its lowest setting. Remember, this has the DS's hydropneumatic suspension system, so you can actually raise or lower the car as you wish. And in this sort of low rider style, it is incredibly low. The top of the wheel is probably about there. And when we put it into its higher setting later on, you'll be able to see that the car just raises all the way up. It's so, so cool to be able to do that. As we move around the back of the car, you'll see what I mean about a slightly curious design and of course it's all down to personal taste but personally I think the back is sort of quite a strange looking thing compared to all that lovely smooth lines and symmetry of the front. You've got these lights which are sitting incredibly low. I know we've got it in the low slung mode at the moment but they are so so very low sort of squidged down here and then above that we've got this massive central number plate sitting there. Um, yeah it's quite a strange rear end to the car but some are obviously going to absolutely love that i just think it's quite a curious design then we've got these teeny little twin pipes either side 
In the center of the rear reflector is the button to push to open the boot, which is actually pretty damn decent, although you have got the spare tire in there as well, but big enough to chuck a load of bags in. So you've got plenty of space to throw stuff in the back. And of course that's handy because this car really was intended to be a great motorway cruiser. Leave Paris at lunchtime and be dining in Cannes in the evening. It's that kind of vibe. What we want to see though is at the other end of the car and that's under the hood because I want to have a look at this Maserati engine. So I'm just going to pull this, open that up and get ourselves in here to stick your hand quite far underneath there. There's just a little latch there, but you have to really get your hand in there. Pull this up and here we go. That just rests there quite nicely actually. So come on, come in here and have a look at this because at the front here, we've got these familiar friends. We've got these spheres which control the hydropneumatic suspension that we talked about in the Citroen DS Safari video. If you haven't watched that, check that out on YouTube. We'll leave a link in the description below so you can see that video. And we describe exactly how that works. And of course, this car has inherited that system, albeit it's probably slightly uprated from there. So that is now sort of all at the very front. And then behind that, we've got this incredible Maserati engine. What we have here is a 2.7 litre Maserati V6 engine fed by triple Weber carburettors. It produces around 170 horsepower, which unlike a Maserati sends the power to the front wheels instead of the rear via a smooth shifting five speed manual transmission. Right, it's getting chilly out here. So let's put this down and go and have a look at the interior. Just pop each side down like that and I'll meet you in there. Oh, the interior of the Citroen SM. The perfect car if you're a porn star in the 70s, this. It looks incredible. Lots of squeaky leather, great purple color on the outside. And on the inside here, well, it's very interesting actually. There's a lot going on. I can see why Burt Reynolds' wife chose this as her daily in the longest yard because it is really very cool in the 70s i can imagine this was like the the height of luxury because you've got these lovely adjustable leather seats there's plenty of room in the back you can actually get a grown-up sitting in the back there um, and the center console it looks like something that a scaramanga bond villain would have in their car because there's lots of little nice switches to play with um, electric windows here look at that that's not bad for the 70s, is it? Um, and then we've actually got a very cool, just in the centre here, retro style radio. This is actually an upgraded radio, I think probably with uh, DAB. It even looks like it's got a slot here for the SD card. But importantly, it all fits in with the style of the interior of this car, which is great. As I mentioned, when we talked about the engine, we've got a five speed manual gearbox and it's actually quite a interesting looking setup here because when I first got in I thought oh god no it's an automatic but actually it's just how it looks there's no sort of H pattern gate it's actually a horizontal gate but then you sort of shift in the same usual pattern but it just looks quite strange. Down to my left hand side here I'll just open the door actually because it's a bit easier to use but just down here you've got the hydraulic lever. So you, this is when you'll see in a moment, I'll do it for you in a second. It's down in its lowest setting, which is the furthest forward. If I put it all the way back, the car raises up nicely. So that's just a really cool, fun feature. And in fact, again, with the hydropneumatic suspension, when you start the car up, it sort of naturally sort of raises and settles into position there. And you get the same effect when, when you go into braking. When you, when you brake, the whole car sort of levels off. It's quite clever. Anyway. The dashboard's quite interesting as well because you've got this lovely sort of copper, bronze, rose gold metal and then inlaid into that you've got these oval dials. So we've got the speedometer, the Jaeger rev counter and then all of your warning lights clustered into one here and then to the furthest right you've got the clock. Now actually as I sit here the ASMR fans would be really excited about this car because there's lots of squeaks and noises from the leather chair. You can hear the clock ticking away and then you've got all these buttons to press which 
very satisfying clicks and pushes. Up front, we've got our heating controls, hazard lights and vents here. We've got a little choke as well for when you start her up. Below, as you'd expect, we've got our three traditional pedal layouts for a, a, a manually geared car. But like the DS, we've got the little nipple brake pedal in the middle. So that's quite something to get used to. You just sort of squeeze that ever so gently. You learn to apply the right amount of pressure to this style of brake rather than the traditional foot brake. It's because it's just a little button that you're squeezing. It takes some time to get used to how much pressure to apply. But after driving for five minutes or so, you'll soon get the hang of it. The steering wheel is open. Again, that's a very sort of iconic look for Citroen to have this very open spaced steering wheel. So there's no, uh, sp there's no spokes interrupting the wheel at all, but it's quite an underwhelming looking steering wheel actually. Nothing, nothing too fussy at all uh, compared to the rest of the car, which has got a load going on. Right, I think I'll dare to fire it up now and then show you, probably get the camera to come around the other side and show you how, as I move the lever just down the side here, how the car raises and lowers. Right, start it up. Currently in its lowest setting, rumbling away. And now I'm just gonna pull the lever, check this out. I'm gonna go all the way up into the highest setting. Look how far, look, as I accelerate, the car goes up. <laughs> look how high it goes. Oh, I feel like a four by four in comparison to where it was. It's incredible, isn't it? Now watch this as we go down. I mean, it really does drop down like a low rider. Ready? Sinks so far, you think it's got there, but then it keeps going. That is so cool, isn't it? Right, she's ticking over nicely. So let's take her out for a quick drive and see what it's like in a Citroen SN. This is a car that if I'm completely honest, I paid very little attention to before I saw it on the site on collectingcars.com. It wasn't something that was on my radar, but I've had quite a lot of good fun recently in some old Citroens. We've had a great time with the Citroen 2CV. We did a video on the Citroen DS Safari. And so when I saw this, it immediately captured my imagination. I mean, the thing just looks magnificently cool in this vibrant purple colour. And then the fact that we find out that the thing's got a Maserati engine in it, I was like completely hooked. I never thought Citroen was a brand that I was a fanboy of, but boy, I do love these things. <laughs> They're just so, so cool. And it's supremely comfortable as you'd expect. It sort of wafts around, but then you've got this great lump under the hood, which you can really put the hammer down. Now the steering is quite interesting in this. It's so reminiscent of the DS and of course the steering wheel, I think famously you could get to full lock in just two turns and this wants to spring back to the centre all the time. So that, look at this, it's sort of self-leveling almost. There's just so much to like about this car. Firstly, the way it looks, and then of course, the way it makes you feel. People look at you in this and actually smile, as opposed to some of the other gestures they make if you're in a bright red Italian sports car. The gearbox actually makes a really satisfying clinking as you go through. I really like that actually. You get noticed because you're driving something different, quirky and cool, not just some overt display gratuitously showing off your wealth. This has got style and panache. It's a shame that because of the oil crisis and some of the corporate issues that Citroen was going through at the time that the SM project got all rolled up because if there are more nice by lunchtime customers, then this car could have gone on to great things. It does have some get up and go, and I think the thing is, is that, because it bounces around a little bit, you sort of can lose a little bit of confidence as you turn a corner or hit a bump. Wow. 
I was just reading an article earlier about the SM and they say that the main innovation was the steering. The SM's powered system was known as Direction Arapel, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, and was speed sensitive setup which was distinguished not only by its super high gearing of two turns from lock to lock but also its hydraulically assisted self-centering. So the system's party trick was that it was always put the wheel back to the centre, engine running or not. Mind you, I don't think you'd really want to do that on a regular basis, but um, that's interesting. Yeah, look at that. So let's just pop that down there. I'll go into first gear and then move away. Now let's just go hard like that and it does just go straight back to centre, that's interesting. Let's try it when I'm slowing down to a stop. What happens if I go lock there? It goes all the way back to centre. That is very clever. Right, off we go. It is definitely sportier and definitely more comfortable improved in every way I think from the DS. I just think this is supremely cool. This thing is going to be just as much at home on the autobahns, cruising down the motorway, heading down for south of France or cruising through a city. It doesn't matter. This can kind of, it's got that Jekyll and Hyde personality. You've got this lovely soft ride and then this beast of a engine up front. It's a real nice marriage between the French and the Italian, this Citroen SM. French engineering and styling and an Italian Maserati V6. It's a really great match. It's the car, or the Citroen, you never thought you wanted until now. The lovely Citroen SM. Oh! Thanks for watching and see you soon.